welcome to the Curriculum Square channel. We are here today with our creator of the month, who is Benita Sutton. She is the creator of Land of the Free, and we're super excited to hear from her today and hear more about her project. Benita, can you tell us um, a little bit about yourself and your experience in teaching group classes? You've been doing it for a while, I hear. Yes, I've been teaching group classes um, for more than 10 years. My oldest is now married and living his life. And when he was younger is when I started doing group classes. And we started with doing little book clubs and that kind of evolved into other fun classes. And the last class that I taught was the Land of the Free class. Awesome. And how many students do you usually have in a class that when you teach? When I teach, um, I've had as little as eight kids in a class. I've had up to 18 to 20 kids in a class. Wow. So the class and the kids. And we're talking about homeschoolers, right? These have all been homeschool classes? All been homeschool groups, either in my community or at the local um, homeschool gathering. Awesome. Awesome. So should I ask you, do you think your kids like you when you teach? <laughs> I think I walk away with a good relationship with them. You know, I still get wedding invitations from them and I get their baby announcements. And so I think, I think, I think they did. We had a lot of fun, a lot of great memories. And I know at the end of the year, there's always lots of hugs and We'll miss you kind of things because you know after you're with them for a while you just love them a lot so what do you think it is that is that makes that connection between you as the teacher and them as the student how does that happen any ideas well you kind of got to just um, boil it down to what is the most important part of your class and if it's the content in your class then that will be amazing you'll have amazing content but if you want to be able to inspire the students to, to want to enjoy the, con the content that you provided or to be excited about what you're teaching, you've got to have a good relationship with them. They've got to trust you that you're teaching them something awesome. And that's not going to happen if they don't know that, they care, that you care about them. And I think that's really, really true that you have to create that relationship in order for really deep learning to happen in the classroom, right? Yeah. Yeah. They have to be willing to go to that really deep place and they only go to that deep learning place with someone that they trust. Awesome. Awesome. I, I love that. And that is something really important for all of us to remember um, because I think a lot of times we get sidetracked with the content and even though the content is important, the content can get in the way of really deep learning happening. So thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, what was your inspiration behind writing The Land of the Free? It was my dad. So my dad is like the ultimate dad, I guess. He, um, I grew up on a farm here in Idaho and we grew up raising cows and you know, I have memories of falling asleep on the tractor and, you know, it was just very, very idyllic. And my dad is a very idyllic farmer. You know, he has the really rough hands, and but he has the kindest heart. You know, he has held each one of his grandbabies just with so much pride and joy. And yet probably the day before he was helping a calf be born, you know, so... He's just got the full gamut there. And I see the qualities that my dad has the qual and my grandfather had as, as farmers. And I think that those qualities would be so valuable if more people had them. You know, not everybody is going to be a farmer, but you can still have that trust in God. You know, you can still learn to be economical, all those really important principles that farmers follow, you know, and um, I was also inspired by a series of lectures that were offered for a different class by a company called Lemmy, and it was a great class and I loved it. And I decided I wanted to take a different, a different approach to 
the lectures that they gave. So I use their lectures that you have to buy through Lemmy, and they're a great company if you ever get to take one of their classes. You'll you'll love it. So you go and you get you get to listen to these amazing um, lectures that talk about all of these wonderful principles that have been shown over and over and over again through the farmers. Awesome. And when they purchase your product, um, you have information in there of how they can go get these lectures? Yeah, the, there's a, a link in all of the information. It takes you right to the Lemmy website so that you can buy it directly from them. Awesome. That is fabulous. Thank you. I love hearing about your dad and about your grandfather and how this uh, is their, part of their legacy that you're then sharing with everybody else. So thank you for doing that. Um, let me ask you, when the first time you taught this particular project, um, how was your experience and what advice would you give to mentors that are actually teaching it for the very first time? Well, if you're teaching it for the first time, um, come in with it, an open mind. If you love gardening, then you will love the project. If you want to love gardening, you will love the project. You know, it's one of those projects where you can come in not knowing much about gardening or the farmer's life and be okay because you all get to learn it together and that was my experience a lot of the times with my kids is i was like well i've never done this either so let's go for it you know one of the one of our field trips we went and did is we went and changed oil and i've never changed oil and the kids have never changed oil but it was a great learning experience that we were able to do together, you know, and when we taught, I, I had such a fun time telling experiences from my childhood because I have some weird stories that make sense to me as a farmer's daughter, but they make no sense to anyone else. Like, I, jo I would joke with them about how um, we always had lots of pets, lots of cats and dogs, but they were always outside. They lived outside, they caught the mice, you know, and they helped herd the cows and they were part of the farm team, but they were always outside. They were not allowed inside ever. However, um, the pets were outside, but it was not unusual for in the middle of winter during cabin season, if a calf was having a hard time, a calf would find its way into the living room by the fireplace with my dad sitting next to it, you know, just taking care of this calf and there would be a calf in our house, but never. <laughs> Dog or the cat. Never the dog or the cat. <laughs> it was okay for a cow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I could just see like a cow walking into my house, a little baby cow, and, and just laying down next to the fireplace. It would be so because they're still wet. You know, the mama is just barely giving birth to this cow, and it's like the miracle of life right there in your living room. And it's really quite amazing, and I have wonderful memories of it. But when I told that story to my kids, they were like, what? <laughs> they just wrapped their head around it. It was, it was great. What a great opportunity for you to be able to pass that on to them and try to kind of broaden their mind, stretch it a little bit to try to get them to understand this concept of, of how important life was. And that it sounds like your father was willing to do what needed to happen in order to make sure that that little calf would make it through on its first day. So it's so true. It's so true. And you don't have to be a farmer's daughter to appreciate the principles that are taught in the project because not a lot of people grow up on farms anymore. And so what's great about the principles in the project is that you get to pull those experiences from your own life and share them. So you get to inspire them, maybe not necessarily with farm time stories, but you know, I'm sure you have stories that where you talk about how you had to be creative with your finances or how you had to jerry rig something to make it work. You know, there are these kinds of principles everywhere. They, you just have to recognize them in your life and focus on them. Awesome. And what a great opportunity for us as mentors to be able to do that while we're going through this process of teaching this class. So what it's, it's a growth for the teacher as well as for the kids, for sure. So tell me what your favorite part of this project is. So this project is designed to last a full year, correct? Yes, it's a full year project and it's, um, it's designed to meet about three months 
during the fall and then four months in the spring. And my favorite part, there's like so many parts. I'm like, well, I like that. And I like that. And I like that. But if I could only pick one thing in the project, I would say the book discussions. The book discussions are, they can get so deep. If you let the kids talk and explore, they can get so powerful. One month we read the book Hatchet by Gary Polson. And we also read the book Touching Spirit there. Um, by Ben Michelson. And both of these books deal with young men who find themselves in stranded in the wilderness, you know, kind of helpless, but they both react differently. One says, I'm going to do it. The other one freaks out. And so we got to compare these two stories and talk about, well, what worked? What didn't work here? And we just really got to going deep. And they were like, well, if this kid would have done this, it would have been so much better. And I'm never going to do that. And it was just a really powerful conversation to have with these kids to talk about these two books. So let me ask you a question about that. Because um, I've been in some really awesome book discussions. And I've also been in some book discussions where the only person who seemed to be getting anything out of it was the teacher. So do you have like one thing that you could share with us um, if somebody's doing this for the very first time and they want to have a great book discussion, but they're really afraid of it and they've never done it before, maybe they've never even seen a really great one before. What would be one piece of advice that you would give them to help them move forward? Well, first of all, just embrace that it's going to be awkward and you're going to not know what you're doing. And that's so okay. Just go with it, feel awkward, it's fine. But when you go to the book discussion, be prepared. When you read the book, make sure you've got a pencil or a highlighter with you and you highlight those parts of the book that are meaningful to you, that have depth to them, that you would love to talk about. Think of questions that you can ask the kids, not just yes or no questions, not just what's your favorite part questions, but questions that get them to discuss questions like, wow, how would you do that if it was done in our modern time? What would you have done different if you were there? You know, questions that can get them talking or even ask them a controversial question that makes them argue with you so that they have to defend their points. You know, ask them things so that they get talking and then once they talk, you have to be quiet. You have to shut your mouth and let them talk. And that's so hard as a mentor because you're prepared and you have all this wonderful stuff, but the class isn't about the teacher or the mentor or whoever's leading the class. It's about the kids. And so you want them to do most of the talking, get them to talk about what was in depth. And it probably won't happen your first or second book discussion. But once you build these relationships with them and they trust you, they will learn to be open with you with these powerful lessons that they find. You know, I remember one, um, one book that we read and it talked a lot about God. And one of our students in our class was, was legitimately struggling with God. If there even was a God and we got into this, it, I wasn't even planning on going this direction, but the kids got into this huge, not a debate, but discussion of how you see God in your life. And you know, and this was just a little silly book we had read, but yet the kids were able to talk about, well, this is when you see God. This is when he is there. You know, and it was just a real beautiful conversation that I was left to witness. I had nothing to do with it. I just let them talk and that's where it went. Wow, that's inspiring. That's really exciting. I, I love it when those times happen in my own classroom. And so hearing you describe it um, gets me excited. I know that right now we're currently at the end of the school year, but I'm ready to go teach again. <laughs> so that's awesome. You know, there is a plenty of opportunities that you fall on your face, plenty of opportunities where you're like, dang, I talk too much, plenty of opportunities where the kids are like, I didn't read and I didn't read. And that's okay. That's so okay. Because the next month, just do it again. And you'll get those conversations. You will you have to be patient with yourself as you learn. And as the kids learn that this is a safe place to talk. So fall on your face. It's all good. And then you can do it again. Yay. 
just hang in there. Just keep going. Just keep working at it. It is something that comes with practice, right? Like the more we practice and the more we see what went well and what didn't go well during that, then the better we'll do the next time and the next time and the next time. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So land of the free is actually designed, um, as a, as a class, you can use it in several different age ranges, right? Um, tell us what those age ranges are. And then let's talk a little bit about the youngest age range. Okay. So the class is divided up into, um, the younger kids, so like under 12, eight to 12, 10 to 12. And then there is a 12 to 14 and then there's 14 and above. And the 12 to 14 and the 14 and above are mostly the same. There is a, there's like um, final exams in the older class that, and they do um, more presentations and papers, but for the most part, it's very, very similar. Okay. okay. When you're working with the 10 to 12 year olds, um, what are some advice you can give us on how to shorten the class if it needs to be a little bit shorter um, or make some changes? Keep it really, really simple. You know, when you are introducing a, one of the principles of the month, don't give a 20 minute discussion like you would with older kids. Keep it to three minutes, you know, keep the books short and, and read it in class together. Just keep it simple. Talk about what you love and then do lots of hands on stuff have those kids get their hands in the dirt and just experience, you know, the land. Awesome. Awesome. Great advice. Great advice. There's quite a book list that comes with the curriculum and we get to pick some of the books that we want to use in the class. How does that work? Yes. You get to pick the monthly books that you'll be reading as a class in the curriculum. I have a list of 20 or so books that you can choose from what works for you because you're going to pick different books for older kids versus you know, younger kids, but some of my favorites is, I love the book, um, Miracle on Maple Hill by Virginia Sorensen. Okay. It's a book about um, a father who is suffering from PTSD after World War II, and so they move to Vermont on a farm to help him heal. And then I love, of course, Anna Green Gables. We love Anna Green Gables. Oh. And uh, Little Men, Little Men has some wonderful conversations that you can have you know, there's just so many, you can, it's, it's really hard for me to pick which ones to do for classes because I want to do them all. <laughs> and so, um, it's fun that you, you pick actually picked a couple of my favorite books too. So Little Men, oh my gosh, I would be all over that one in a heartbeat and the Anne of Green Gables series as well. I love those books. And in fact, I have four boys, um, you have three boys, right? And, and Little Men is just like, the book for boys. Like it's a perfect book. If you have a fair amount of boys in the class too, like grab that one. It's one of my favorites. Um, okay. Let me ask you, what should mentors focus on most when teaching this project? Like we've talked about the book discussions. Um, you've mentioned a little bit about hands on. Um, but let's talk about that a little bit more. There's, there's so much value and there's so much in this, in this one class, um, all the discussions, the papers, da, 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 there's all this great stuff. But if you wanted to just make sure they remembered one thing, what would it be? When you're planning your classes, when you're planning your discussions and your books, keep your students in mind. What is appropriate for them? What is the age group that you need to be centering this on? You know, you need to, what is best for them? Think of what they need. Think of the relationships you have with them and try to build on that with the activities that you plan. If you need to tighten your relationship, then plan a group project so that you can get that relationship better. If you need to work out some quirks in your class, have them do individual projects so that you can work one-on-one -on -one with them as you go around the class. You know, keep them in mind so that as you are doing your best, you can help them do their best. So when you're talking about that, I'm thinking about what you said earlier about the relationship of trust that you need to build. And really, it sounds like if you're really thinking about the kids and their needs and, and it's about them, not about you as the teacher, that that trust will naturally be built. Those kids will naturally trust you and feel safe and secure in your classroom because they know how much you care about them. So that's just it's a circle. It is, and it's so true, and you'll learn that once you start sharing 
things that you have learned throughout your life that relate to the to the principles, then um, they will naturally want to share back with you. So when you talk about the hard times you have, they'll be like, I get that. We had a hard time too. You know, it's just a natural way that they're going to want to talk back. And that is a real fast way to build trust as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to insert something in here more about this trust idea. So um, some of the people watching this right now may not know that actually you and I are very good friends and we have worked together on other projects in the past. And one of those projects was um, we actually taught a group of 15 and 16 year olds and um, it was a fabulous class. It was actually like just as much fun working with the kids as it was working with each other. We really we did. Loved that. And we had a third person with us too. And it was just an amazing bond between the three of us. But we took these kids to Haiti um, at the end of the year for this particular, it was very appropriate for the particular class that we were doing at the time. And um, you talked about, the struggles, right? And when you start sharing your struggles and one of those little girls that was with us in Haiti, she shared her family struggles with these beautiful Haitians. And I never would have thought that any of our American kids growing up in this country that is so wealthy and so sorry, I guess I'm a little choked up. Um, so wealthy and so full of opportunity would be able to actually make that connection with the Haitians who live in little huts and don't have any electricity. And a lot of them, not just dirt floors, but dirt walls and um, just, but she reached out with her own story. And luckily we had a translator that was translating her speech and they were blown away. And the love that you were seeing going between them was amazing that that connection made through stories and through just being real and being yourself and being willing to share. And that's how she was 14 at the time. Yeah. They, I remember the gaps in the audience when they were like connecting with her, like, really, I have felt that. And there was, it was really a literal bond. You could watch between the audience and this young woman. And afterwards they all wanted to be around her. They all wanted to be with her because they felt that they were talking, that she was talking right to them, like just for them. And it was a beautiful experience. And that's the same kind of connection we can make in the classroom from teacher to student by just sharing things that it doesn't have to be something the student actually went through, but you're sharing your heart and you're sharing the struggle, the principle of it or whatever. And they've felt that same feeling before, like you were saying, they've felt that. And so it's, it's very powerful to teach through stories and to be real and be personable with your, with your audience. Right. Yep. So we learned that lesson that day. That was for sure. Watching her was amazing. Was okay. <laughs> okay. So um, let me ask you, why do you recommend the project be two hours long? I know that for the most part, for the older kids, it's definitely two hours long. So why do we need that much time? Um, what would you say to a mentor who wanted to shorten it, for example? Well, if a mentor wants to shorten it, that's certainly their prerogative. You know, they get to pick what's most important for their class and what's great for their community and go with it. Um, what's hard with having it only an hour long is you're going to have to pick and choose from all of these things available. You're not going to be able to do them all. You're not going to go ahead. Are you worried that a kid will like go crazy sitting in your class for two hours? I mean, that's a really long time. It is and one thing to remember this class there, it's a very hands-on class. It is not a class where they sit very still and listen. It's not like that at all. It's there's discussions, there's sharing, there's presentations that they give, you know, and then there's like a little lecture discussion kind of thing but it's more interactive. It's not just lecture. That's, you know, 20 minutes. And then there's all these um, activities that you do in your class where you are doing things with soil or you're preparing seeds or you're going on field trips and you're visiting farmers in your area or, or greenhouses, you know, so if you're going to shorten it, you know, that's fine. Do what's best for your, co for your co-op but you you have to realize you're not going to be able to accomplish everything if you're not willing to do everything. 
Okay, so it sounds like it's this really well-rounded experience that the kids are going to get if you have the time to give all of that to them. And they might be missing some facets if you don't have the full two hours. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so I have a question for you. So as a creator on Curriculum Square, um, tell me about your experience when you were putting Land of the Free onto Curriculum Square. I just want to share your experience with everybody else out there. So when we decided to put Land of the Free on Curriculum Square, I was all excited because I had previously written out, you know, I had taken all my notes and I had written it out, and I was so excited because I thought it was so good. <sighs> Until I had Genevieve look at it. <laughs> and, Brenda looked, and they were so kind. They were so kind, but they were like, um, honey, let's fix a few things. But they were so kind, and they because they, I know they genuinely want me to succeed with my project. But they gave me some great feedback, and they really helped me express myself better and more clearly. And they helped me with my aesthetics because I had just written it out on a Google Doc. You know, it was just like black. a list, black, black and white. <laughs> They're like, you gotta add something to it, honey, add something to it. So I was able to, you know, put some aesthetics in it and make a little colorful so that it's more enjoyable. And, you know, once I, once I had that all edited, then actually putting it on the system was really quite easy. I was really surprised how easy it was to load it up there and then um, delete it when I realized I need more editing and then reload it up there. <laughs> It's really very easy to put it on once I was finally satisfied with my little project. Awesome. And, and you were one of the first to go on there. So I will admit that the site wasn't working completely smoothly when you first put it on. So hearing that even, even with that, it was still an enjoyable experience for you. Yeah. Um, and that you didn't mind. In fact, you appreciated the help that came from Genevieve. And I, I did help a little bit with yours. I don't usually, I don't do that a lot. Um, but if you know Benita the way I do, you know that she has this beautiful, colorful soul that just needed to shine through. And I, I saw that the black and white Google Doc um, <laughs> was not doing you justice at all. <laughs> So I wanted everybody to see, the, see you the way I see you. And I'm really, really excited about the final project and um, how it turned out. And Genevieve did work with you a lot on the um, editing. And I, I was concerned at first that you might be offended or um, that it might... I don't know, cause more problems than it was help, but really what we've seen so far with both with you, Benita, and with other creators that are on the site is they have given us some really good feedback and been very, very grateful for the help because really it's true. We do want you to succeed. We are putting a platform out there for others to be able to show the hard work that they've done as they've put together classes and stuff for co-ops and Commonwealth schools and the homeschool groups. Um, there's so many moms out there and dads and parents um, that have just put so much hard work into these things and we want their best foot forward and we want them to just be able to shine and share that with everybody else. So um, it's an exciting endeavor, this whole curriculum square as a, as a unit. It's just been really fun, really fun. So I'm glad you've been a part of it. Thank you so much, Benita, so much for sharing Land of the Free with us today and um, answering all of my crazy questions. And I'm really excited for everybody to be able to go to curriculumsquare.com and to click on the land of the free. And what's the name of your actual um, store, Benita? Does it have a, do you have a storefront name? Yeah, I'm the home, homeschooling librarian, I believe. That's right. You are the homeschooling librarian. <laughs> library. She does work in a library. And she probably has a library at her home, too. <laughs> awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> so go visit the homeschool librarian store and see the land of the free um, there's pictures and snapshots of some of the pages that are in there so you can get an idea of what the whole thing's about and um, we wish you all a very very fantastic day and we will see you later bye bye Thank you.